G'day, Terry Gordon here from H&T Gordon Plains. Uh, this video today is going to look at scrutinising the bevel angles in planes and the clearance angle in planes. Now the reason for this video is I've been asked several times over the last few years why H&T Gordon doesn't make um, bench uh, low angle bevel up bench planes with a range of blades sharpened at say 30 degrees, 50 degrees and 90 degrees. And the Blake's point was he'd prefer to buy Australian made if he could um, and with all the different blade angles that he can put in that plane then he'd have an all round plane for planing softwoods and hardwoods. Uh, so we will attempt to answer that question in this video. The second question which is uh, quite different to the first is I've had people that have low angle bevel up planes and they've sharpened their bevel at 50 degrees and tried to plane large hardwood surfaces like say this bench shop for instance and they come to me asking why their plane doesn't want to, it wants to balk at the cut after only a short amount of plane. So after this video um, those two questions should be answered. Several years ago when we looked into making low angle uh, so low angle bevel up planes, we um, did some of our own testing and we found that the plane did balk at the cut with a 50 degree bevel, but it didn't explain everything. We noticed we had to push down very hard after a short amount of planing to make the, the plane cut. So we uh, got on the internet and had a look around and come across these two sites. One is by Brent Beach and the other one is by Steve Elliott. Now these guys um, operate independently and basically they test all different types of blades on the market from the powder metallurgy blades, high speed steel and high carbon steel blades and they analyse the wear on the edge of the blade using microscopes. Now they um, the sites are very scientific and they're not influenced by any manufacturer. The information that they produced is almost identical, which gave me great confidence to use that information as being very, very good. So during this video, what we're going to do is, is um, look at some bevel angles and uh, clearance angles using large cardboard cutouts, which are blown up about, about a thousand times. So you can see what's happening at a microscopic level. So we'll now zoom in on the uh, cardboard cutouts and have a close look at this. This blade here with the black cardboard is a 30 standard 30 degree bevel. This black cardboard cutout is a 50 degree bevel that we you would use in a low angle bevel up plane. Now uh, in the black it's a, considered a sharp blade and then I'm going to overlay my blunt blade. Now, so we'll put the two blunt blades in position and let's talk about a couple of things here. Now from Brent Beach's website and Steve Elliott's, um, a blade is considered blunt after planing on average about 600 lineal feet of wood. Um, to put that in perspective it's roughly, uh, or for metric people, that's a bit less than 200 lineal metres uh, and in time wise, depending on how hard you're planing, but it's talking about taking consecutive cuts, the, this edge will dull looking something like this uh, in about 15 to 20 minutes of planing. That bench that I was sitting up at and that we're using here now, it's 1200mm uh, long by 700mm wide or in the imperial scale 4 foot by 2.5 feet. If I plane that surface once uh, with consecutive strokes that's about 60 lineal feet of wood. Uh, so if I plane that bench top 10 times, that blade would be blunt. And it, obviously there are variables there like the, how good the steel is, the sharpness of the steel and the, how hard the wood is. But in essence, from both of these sites, that curvature there of a blunt blade 
is about a half a thou radius or from that point to that point across the tip is about one thousandth of an inch. One thousandth of an inch, if you're not familiar, is the th thickness of a cigarette paper or if you've never seen one of those, uh, a normal piece of photocopy paper is four thousandths of an inch thick. So it's four times less than the thickness of a piece of paper. So it's still quite sharp, right? But for planing wood, it's about blunt. Now, so you can understand this cardboard cutout, that's the center line of the blade. Now you can see the upper wear bevel actually wears right back to here. And that's from the shaving coming up through the throat of the plane. And this lower wear bevel is quite short. It's about a quarter of the length of the upper wear bevel. So the thing I want to point out here is if I measure from the tip of the sharp blade to the tip of the blunt blade, we have about 42 millimeters. So that's the usual usable sharp blade. Now if we move across to our 50 degree bevel plane, so there's the center line of the blade, and we put our ruler on there, where from the tip of the sharp blade to the tip of the blunt blade, you're looking at about 19, 18 to 19 millimeters. So there's significantly less usable blade there than here. That was the first reason we decided we wouldn't make low angle bevel up planes and modify the uh, blade pitch by putting in a 50 degree bevel. Now we're going to move on to uh, having a look at scrutinising the clearance angle of these planes. Okay, what we have here on this white sheet of cardboard paper is of this dark line here. This is my piece of wood, right, with the grain going that way. And this is simulating my a 62 degree blade pitch, right? So this is my plane basically here, and I'm planing in that direction. So the shaving will come up through here as we push the plane in that direction. First, let's look at our a bevel down. So this is quite a standard configuration and certainly what we use at H&T Gordon, except our blade pitch is 60. But 60 to 62 are both very good angles for planing cranky hardwoods. So let's put that on a, to make the, both cutouts the same or the same pitch. So you've got 62 degrees of blade pitch minus your 30 degree bevel gives us a large 32 degree blade clearance. Now that is a very good setup for planing cranky hardwoods. Now let's bring in the other blade. So this time we're looking at a 50 degree bevel where the bevel of the blade is facing upwards, a bevel up configuration. Same blade pitch, so 62 degree blade pitch minus 50 degree bevel gives me a much reduced 12 degree blade clearance. Right now, both of these scenarios, if the blade's freshly sharpened, we have positive clearance in both cases. So when I take a shaving with either blade, I'm going to get a very good result on cranky hardwoods. So now we'll have a look at the scenario where the blade gets blunt. So the black cardboard cutout is um, considered sharp. The, this red one is when the blade's considered blunt. So you've got to imagine between the two, the curvature on the blade here is going to change. But what I want to show here is um, putting this blade in position, so a 50 degree blade bevel, and I want to show where this lower wear bevel starts to engage with the wood. Have a look where the cutting edge is. And we're going to, we're going to measure that. And it's approximately just not quite six millimeters. All right, so let's remember that. So if I want that blade tip to start cutting, I've got to force this wear quite a large wear bevel down into the wood. Now, if it's about one thou across there, from there to there, which we'll measure, is 40 millimetres. So you've probably got a, a wear bevel there, which you're forcing down into the wood to make the blade cut. 
around about 2,000 of an inch. Now, that's probably not perfect math, perfect maths, but that'll be pretty close to it. So remember those figures, and let's have a look at the bevel down, 30 degree bevel. So this is a, a typical configuration for a H&T Gordon plane. So, same scenario, we're going to have a look at where our wear bevel just starts to touch the wood and measure that distance there. And it's just under 3 millimetres. So, from a um, that larger 32 degree clearance to the 12 degree clearance, there's a lot less um, wear bevel that has to be forced into the wood to make this cut. So if we want to make this blade cut, bring the blade tip down to the wood, right, and let's measure this wear bevel. And it's about 20 mil. So we keep getting this ratio of about 2 to 1 for a 30 degree bevel to 50 degree bevel and also that clearance angle is roughly uh, in a 32 degree clearance as opposed to 12. And the last point I just want to make with this lower wear bevel, as it rubs along the wood, the more um, or the bigger that wear bevel gets the, and the more it contacts with the wood as you're planing, this here will generate a lot of heat. So the more heat you, or more friction you generate, the more heat you will generate, the more your blade will wear with some consecutive passes. So that's uh, another very important reason why um, you, if, with larger clearance angles, if you can minimise that lower wear bevel touching the wood, you will minimise the wear on your blade. Let's just tilt this blade up to a 90 degree blade pitch, right? And let's see what happens. So the tip of the blade is still engaged with the wood, but the lower wear bevel is not touching the wood. All right, so you can see that would be a massive 60 degree clearance there. So in essence, the bigger clearance angle you have, the less problem you will have with the plane wanting to balk at the cut. Now we'll just now we'll move on and have a look at a scenario that Steve Elliott did on his website. Yeah, um, on Steve Elliott's website, he did this experiment where uh, he wanted to show how the lower wear bevel, um, how that affected the plane as as the blade got blunter. Now to do this, he used a narrow piece of wood like this, about three eighths of an inch thick, and um, he set his plane up with a 31 degree bevel, so slightly more than this one, a 16 degree clearance angle in here, right, which gave him a 47 degree blade pitch, which is a fairly typical um, geometry of a plane. Now, the reason why he wanted a narrow piece of wood was so that he could keep planing beyond where the wear bevel started to um, engage the wood. So being a narrow piece of wood and it was cherry, so he could overcome that wear bevel by forcing the plane down and making it continue to cut. And he cut to 800 lineal metres. And he did a series of graphs, which on your screen now you'll see a uh, link to that actual page. And you'll be able to see uh, where this wear bevel started to engage wood. And it was at 100 lineal feet of, of planing which, to put that in perspective, is uh, about two to three minutes of planing, that wear bevel there started to engage the wood. And it, as it went on and on and on, that wear bevel to make the blade cut just kept getting deeper and deeper into the wood. But as you can see, it's a scenario similar to that. Um, but he was able to overcome that because of the narrowness of the wood end. Uh, cherry is a medium density timber. If this was hardwood and wider, obviously he wouldn't have been able to do that experiment. So that page is very worthwhile looking at it. And he makes the comment, the performance of a plane is not so much decided by the sharpness of the edge, although that is important, but the performance degrades because of this wear bevel hitting the wood. So really worth seeing. So just wrapping up um, what happened there with the cardboard cutouts, um, the reason 
we didn't go ahead and make low angle bevel up planes is because um, we optimise our planes for planing Australian hardwoods, so therefore we need a high blade pitch. We weren't prepared to put uh, sharpened blades at 50 degrees to achieve that because of that first cardboard cutout. That was the first reason. Second reason, with low clearance angles, you, you can see clearly that the lower wear bevel starts to interfere with your clearance. The combination of the two put us off making bench planes using that type of geometry. And remember, I'm talking about bench planes, not block planes. Now, we're going to do a part two to this video, which I'm going to go through the scenario we went through to test um, how a uh, low angle bevel up plane performed on a large flat surface. And that'll give, along with the information you've got from this video, plus those hints from us, you'll be able to assess planes yourself to see whether they are suitable for what you're doing in your woodwork. Hope you found this video inf informative and thank you for watching.